some clouds in the background there, but it looks like we could potentially get through this day without any real rain. Sam Ardolino will start on pole position with Sam Stoner alongside Holly Naylor and Ethan Haig on row two. Curtis Latimer and Harry Hurst Grover on row three. Nicholas Ellis and Amelia Pennington share four with Max Rowley and Jacob Dukes on row five. Bartek Filipiak will start 11th with Tom Carter in 12th place. Jaden Hewitt 13th in front of Sandro Ballesteros with Jensen Mason and Maximus Shields on row eight. Finley Whiting sold on on row number nine. <coughs> Juniors then making their way out on the track. Chopping left to right, getting some heat into them tyres. Final heat of the day before we head towards our finals. Points on offer. And this one will be much appreciated for our drivers as they use those points to set the positions for the finals. <coughs> and with Sam Ardolino on pole position, it's hard to look past him in this one for the victory, having had so much pace so far today. One heat one, at least on track, but then picked up a front bearing penalty that dropped him well down the order for that one. However, in heat number two, where he was coming through from the back, he came through from 14 all the way up to fourth place. That's going to be a decent point haul off pole position. It's difficult to see past him unless somebody else can make an early break and try and put some gap between them and the rest of the field and stick with Ardolino as we head towards the final laps. Joe Hewitt has been on, which is Jaden Hewitt. Good luck. He's not had too much of it today. He's been off on the grass, at least in E2 as well. So hopefully he's going to have a little bit more for heat number three here in this junior Rotax class. Field coming down the hill side by side. Ardolino on the left, Stoner on the right. And we're away and racing and it is the outside. It's Stoner who sweeps round the first corner to lead them up the hill for the first time. Ardolino slots into the slipstream and then pops back out to move back into the lead as they head up the hill towards Spoon and Ethan Haig looks like he's managed to get through down the inside as Nicholas Ellis bounces over the curbs and he's going very very slowly at the top of the hill there not sure whether he had a problem or whether it was just too much curb that just bounced that car and he just wasn't able to uh, put the power down Jacob Dukes in the background there looked like he was going to the inside we'll see whether he comes through in front and he does so that's moved Jacob Dukes up I think into seventh place just behind Amelia Pennington Sam Ardolino though will lead them over the line with Ethan Hagen second place and Sam Stone a third in front of Naylor, Hurst Grover, Pennington, Dukes, Latimer, Carter and Rowley with Hewitt in 11th, Shields, Ellis, Delipiak, Whiting and Ballesteros as they all make that long, long run up the hill here at Juan Yugos. Holly Naylor with the green helmet with the blue and black type livery, the 85. Currently running in uh, fourth place on the back of Sam Stoner as Harry Hurst Grover and Amelia Pennington. I think Pennington is through in the background. I think Jacob Dukes may well have found a way to sneak past as well. He does. There's the confirmation on the screen as Max Rowley drops a few places down into 14th. They make the long run up that hill. Stoner all over the back of Ethan Haig. Haig came through in the previous heat at a fair rate of knots. They really only did kick in in the second half of that race. <coughs> Sam Stoner managing to kick with Ethan Haig. And Stoner, the driver that's in the last month, they've had problems with that car. They had a breakage at lid as, uh, he, as Ollie Naylor tries to get to the inside. It's had a bit of work done on that chassis. Looks like it's holding up well though here at GYG, got, you know, you're exerting some forces as you come down there, so the welding looks like it's held up well. Bit of a tap from uh, Stoner, wanting Naylor to work with him. Naylor elects not to and dives down the inside, so Naylor must be confident that he's got the pace to move away from Sam Stoner and wants to go with Ethan Haig towards Sam Ardolino. The gap one second 
or just more between our leading duo. Then a gap of half a second back to Holly Naylor, who's now got Sam Stoner on the back of him. Jacob Duke's not too far back either, as there's a move that's Tom Carter down the inside of Amelia Pennington into the left-hander at compression corner. One second in the gap is exactly as it was on the previous lap by the look of it, although timing sorts itself out a little late and the gap is out by a tenth of a second. Sam Stoner, personal best in the double slipstream of Ethan Haig and Ollie Naylor. And Jacob Duke's behind, but Dukes hasn't really been able to close in since moving through into fifth place. With Tom Carter behind, he's going to have to uh, get a move on unless he wants to get out there, be, bring Tom Carter into play. He needs to at least try and put a cart between himself and Carter. Still not even at half race distance yet here. Ollie Naylor now right on the back of Ethan Haig and looking quite impatient to try and get through on Haig. Half in the slipstream, half out. They're going to have to make something happen soon as Ardolino sets a personal best and Naylor is through on Ethan Haig at the top of the hill. And when I mentioned they're going to have to make something happen, that's because they've got Jacob Dukes in that bright blue helmet joining right up on the, bat on the back now. It's took him two laps or so to close in, but once he's on the back, he's not going to hang around. And through he comes on Sam Stoner down the inside and up. And Tom Carter is through as well and inserts himself right in the mix in this battle for second place. Gap is around one and a half seconds now with Ardolino <coughs> now having to uh, look over his shoulder and you see Ollie Naylor behind him rather than Ethan Haig. Jacob Dukes up into four, Carter fifth, Stoner, Pennington, Hurstgrove, Latimer and Whiting. Your top ten. In front of Ellis, Shields, Hewitt, Ballastera, Rowley and Filipiak. Still only 12 seconds, covering the 16 runners in Junior Rotax. And Ollie Naylor has opened up a gap of around about half a second back to Ethan Haig. And now Jacob Duke and Tom Carter. Haig sets personal best, as does Stoner in third and sixth respectively. Ellis sets one in 11. Weather now, Dukes and Carter start arguing between themselves as Carter makes a late dive down the inside of Jacob Dukes. And could that open up too much of a gap now? Because this is your championship battle on screen. Those out at the front, they've got their own battles going on within this race, but the championship really in Junior Rotax so far this season is between, has been between Tom Carter and Jacob Dukes. So no matter where they are on track, this one is more than just about the race it's more than just about pride there's a championship at stake and carter has found a way through on jacob duke up into fourth place then and now trying to close in on ethan haig to put another cart between him and his championship rival not close enough at the top of the hill on ethan haig there was a fair, fairly decent gap back although he's hard on the brakes as carter closing in No, he can make moves in this section. It's the left-hander as they come round here. He likes this one down the inside into the left. Yes, he does. Through he goes on Ethan Haig. You could almost see that move coming from the top of the hill. He was close enough to get alongside Ethan Haig. And through he slides then up into what will now be third place. With a gap of just under a second to Ollie Naylor. More importantly, he's got a cart between him and his nearest championship rival, Jacob Dukes. Third for Carter, fifth for Dukes as it stands with one minute and 15 seconds remaining. I think three more laps here in junior <coughs> Rotax because your race leader, Sam Ardolino, is already crossing the line in a roundabout now. You can see it in a few moments of a click to 10 laps. There it is with a personal best as well. His personal best of 42 is lower than the 47 that was at the top of the screen when he came through. So he's going to get across the line with five seconds. So we're going to get two more laps in. I think three potentially as they come round. And that's going to allow Tom Carter to have a fairly good crack at Ollie Naylor. 
at some point because he's right up on the back. Jacob Dukes has managed to find a way through on Ethan Haig. It could be a little bit too far back to do anything about those drivers in front of him. Carter still behind Naylor as they head down the hill towards Paddock Bend. Leader comes over the line with seven seconds remaining. You see it now elapses down to zero, so it'll be a last lap board next time. Two laps remaining, and Carter is right on the back of Ollie Naylor as they head up the hill towards Spoon Corner, and he is through hard on the brakes and up into second place. I don't think anything Naylor can do there to try and get back alongside down the hill towards the carousel. And Tom Carter is up into second place. Naylor now just needs to try and stick with the 45 car and see if he can drag himself away from a charging Jacob Dukes in fourth place. Last lap board is out then because Ardolino is through with a gap of two and a half seconds on Carter and Naylor who has 1.2 to Jacob Dukes. Up into the top bend then and Sam Ardolino least on track will be his second victory obviously picked up that penalty in heat one that put him further down but points are going to put him I think at least inside the top four and give him a good crack at the final here at JKC round five at Glanyu Gores Park down the hill into Paddock Bend then for the final time Sam Ardolino takes victory in heat three from Tom Carter and Ollie Naylor the top three Jacob Dukes has to settle for fourth with Haig Stoner and then Whiting getting in front of Hurst Grover Latimer and Ellis completing the top ten as he gets past Pennington on the final lap Shields and Hewitt the uh, 12th and 13th with Ballesteros, Rowley and Filipiak battling to the line to complete what 16 runners